as we all know, San Francisco is coming off a disastrous 2-14 and 14 season. But tonight, they start fresh with a lot of new faces, including a new head coach and a new quarterback. After losing last night's season opener, the Warriors bounce back against Chicago, the team with the best record in the NBA last season. The Bulls also have the reigning MVP in Derrick Rose. Golden State got off to a great start. Andres Biedrinch with the steal, and it's Steph Curry with the half-court lob to David Lee. Curry had 10 assists. Monte Ellis had a subpar opener, but his shot was falling tonight. He had 13 of his game-high 26 in the first quarter. Now it's going to be Curry from the corner. He knocks down three of his 21. He also had six steals. Rose will bury this tray, but was held to just 13 points. At the half, the Warriors led by 16. In the fourth, a scary moment as Curry lands awkwardly on his bad right ankle. He'd leave the contest and not return. No word yet on how serious the injury is. The Bulls cut the lead to single digits, but the Warriors held firm. Lee with a great feed to Ellis for the jam. Golden State knocks off Chicago 99-91 as Mark Jackson earns his first ever victory as a head coach. I, I talked to the guys afterwards. It would have been a blue Christmas for the 49ers if they had lost to Seattle on Saturday. But all season long, different players have stepped up. David Akers kicked four more field goals to set an NFL single season record with 42. Michael Crabtree set up the game-winning kick with a clutch 42-yard catch on second and 18. And a hustling Larry Grant sealed the victory by forcing a late fumble. Today, head coach Jim Harbaugh gave thanks. You know, in a lot of ways, Crab saved Christmas, made it a lot merrier. The 49ers would have clinched the number two seed if the Saints lost to the Falcons tonight. New Orleans took the early lead when Pierre Thomas bangs it in from four yards out. He then put a bow on the ball and gave it to a fan for a late Christmas present. But the game ball went to Drew Brees, who threw four touchdowns and broke Dan Marino's single season passing record of 5,084 yards. New Orleans wins easily 45 to 18 and improves to 12 and 3. Now, if the 49ers and Saints wind up with identical records, San Francisco does own the tiebreaker. And that is your Toyota Sports Report. Well, that's interesting. So San Francisco would get the tiebreaker. So they can just win out and they'll be the number two seed. All right. And a big game for Oakland this weekend. They must win. Do you it, think they will? must win, baby, as they say. <laughs> they <laughs> or it's will? all over. <laughs> it looks pretty good right yeah. now. You know, they're going to be at home. Right. And the Chargers really don't have a whole lot to play for. Their season's over. Norv Turner will probably get fired. So yeah, we'll see. hopefully they'll do it. Yeah. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, Steph Curry, everybody's worried about his ankle, and he yeah. keeps hurting it again. Yeah, Warrior fans were holding their breath last night, right. but it looks like it's going to be okay. Really? Warriors guard Stephen Curry is now listed as day-to-day -day after re-injuring his ankle last night against Chicago. X-rays revealed no break, but he might might sit out tomorrow's home game against the Knicks. With about six minutes left, Curry re-injured himself when he came down awkwardly on Kyle Korver's foot. Before then, he looked great with 21 points, seven rebounds, 10 assists, and six steals. As for last night's win, Coach Mark Jackson was pleased, but says there's a long way to go. Oh, it, we're never satisfied. By the way, former Warrior fan favorite Jeremy Lin has been signed by the Knicks, so he should be in uniform tomorrow when New York comes to Oracle Arena. Despite being thin at wide receiver, the 49ers have released veteran Braylon Edwards. He did play last Saturday, but has been uh, ineffective because of knee and shoulder injuries. The Pro Bowl rosters are out, and the 49ers tied the Patriots for most, most players with eight. Their running back, Frank Gore, tackled Joe Staley, and kickers David Akers and Andy Lee. Making the team on defense, Justice Smith, Patrick Willis, and defensive backs Carlos Rogers and Deshaun Goldson. The Raiders had three players named to the Pro Bowl, defensive tackle Richard Seymour, punter Shane Leckler, and place kicker Sebastian Janikowski. Tomorrow night, Cal takes on number 24 Texas at the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. The Bears are a three-point underdog. Cal is 5-2 and two in bowl games under head coach Jeff Tetford. He says the Bears will rely heavily on quarterback Zach Maynard and his brother, wide receiver Keenan Allen, a duo that kept improving as the season went on. Yeah, they, they've grown well together. The Kraft Fight Hunger Bowl is this Saturday at AT&T Park. That game will feature Illinois and UCLA. Today, players and coaches met with the media. Also on hand, 49er greats Ronnie Lott and Jerry Rice. The two Hall of Famers were there to support the bowl's goal of providing food for the needy. This is a great community that we've been able to play, play, uh, play for. The most important thing is that it can be beat. And all the Kraft Fight Hunger campaign hopes to raise enough money to provide 25 million That's meals. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's good for them. All right. Rick, all right. Thank you.
Down the right field line, and it's down. Darwin Barney with his first major league hit, and it's a double. Congrats to Darwin Barney. I'm a quarter Japanese, quarter Korean, and uh, the rest of me is, you know, all kinds of white. For me, the stereotype that I'm breaking is the one that I gave myself. You know, everyone gives themselves stereotypes where uh, they give themselves boundaries. You know, and and for me, I always, I always thought, oh, I'm not big enough, uh, I'm not strong enough. You know, there's some big guys out there. Um, you know, so I just kept working hard and and you know chased it. And uh, fortunately, I'm here, and uh, you know, I'm trying to stay. After just one full season in the majors, Darwin Barney is not only the Chicago Cubs starting second baseman, he's being looked upon as a cornerstone for the franchise. One of five children, Darwin grew up in Beaverton, Oregon. He learned to play sports from his father. He grew up playing sports. Um, he, uh, he played college basketball. Um, you know, at 5'6", he was a point guard, you know, and uh, that's tough to do in basketball, being that short. So. Uh, he was my coach in all my sports and, um, you know, he really had that influence on me. I grew up playing four sports, five sports my whole life. Um, and baseball was one of the sports that I really excelled at the most and I fell in love with it. Um, you know, and I, and I just went from there. After leading his high school team to its first ever state championship, Darwin starred at Oregon State. As a team shortstop, the Beavers won back-to-back -back College World Series titles in 2006 and 2007. In 2010, Barney was voted to the College World Series Legends team, joining such greats as Barry Bonds, Will Clark, and Robin Ventura. Here's the throw to the plate. He is out. What a relay from Darwin Barney. Along with Darwin, there were four other players of Asian ancestry in the Beavers' starting lineup. What a turn by Joey Wolf! You know, it's pretty special. You know, we had all kinds. We had, you know, Hapa Alleys like me, and uh, we had a Hawaiian kid, and we had a full Korean kid, and, um, you know, that's just, that's just how it was. It was fun, you know. Uh, there was one day we all were one through five in the lineup, and we thought it was pretty cool. So, uh, you know, I take a lot of pride in that. He also takes pride in his family, which often travels to watch him play in Chicago and on the West Coast. My mother's father, who is full Japanese, and my mother's mother is full Korean. Yeah, you know, when I was really young, I always thought I was Hawaiian. Um, my mom's dad remarried to a full Hawaiian, and uh, we went to Hawaii, uh, you know, at least once a year. You know, and, uh, you know, that's what my culture was. That was what I thought it was. And, uh, you know, to this day, it's, you know, it's still a place that I like. I have a lot of family there. And, uh, you know, so the more and more I grow up, I learn more about myself and where I came from. A 326 batting average in April earned Darwin National League Rookie of the Month honors. He also takes pride in his fielding. His spectacular catch against Atlanta helped end Dan Ugla's 33-game hitting streak. Catch by Barney! Darwin Barney robbing Ugla! This game is built around pitching and defense, and, and for a guy like me especially, I like to focus on the defensive side. and. And, uh, you know, so I take pride in that, and, and I think it's a lot of fun making plays. He stayed with it, made a heck of a play. Darwin is not just a natural when it comes to baseball, but playing piano. He plays by ear and writes his own music. You know, my parents kind of forced it on me at first, and, uh, you know, after I was done taking lessons, I kind of fell in love with it uh, on my own. And, uh, you know, started listening to some CDs and heard some stuff, and I was like, man, I can play that. And so now I play everything by ear and uh, just have fun with it. But for now, he's having the most fun playing baseball for the Cubs. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, you, you set your own boundaries on yourself. Uh, in life and in sports, it, it's all the same. Uh, you know, people are their own worst critic. And, you know, that's, that's very true in, in life and sports. You know, so, you know, don't set boundaries. Uh, you know, I try not to set my goals too low or too high. Uh, just set your goals day to day and uh, go from there and try to have as much fun as you can. Boy, can't do it any better than that.